Are you looking for a user story template in Excel? Perhaps something just like this. Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to create this template from scratch. I'll also be making some recommendations when it comes to populating it. Now, if you are short of time, I have made this pre-built, pre-formatted template available for instant download. There will be a link in the description down below if you did want to pick that up. Nevertheless, let me now walk you through exactly how to create this template. So the first thing that I recommend that you do is just type in a title for the document. That way, if you're sending it to any stakeholders, they know exactly when they open it up what they're looking at. So in B2, I've just typed in user story template. I'm going to bold that and also increase the font size. So this is all available via the home ribbon. I'm going to make this font size around 18 or 20. I'm then going to select from A1 through to J2, and I'm going to select a light gray fill color. So on the drop down, I've just selected light gray. Now, you may want to change the colors or even the font depending on your organization's branding and what kind of works for you. So just bear that in mind, but I'm going to be using Calibri and Grays because I think that looks professional and is going to work for what we need. Next, I recommend giving a content area for what project these user stories or user story relate to. So as an example, in the template I just showed you, it was a new mobile app, but you can always put your kind of project name here after that colon. Now I'm going to bold that as well, and I'm also going to apply the light gray. Now don't worry that the light gray doesn't kind of cover this. We are going to be changing some formatting in a moment as we build out the rest of the template and it will all be kind of worked out. So now I'm going to walk you through the columns that you're going to want to include in your template. So the first is title. So this gives you the ability to provide a clear, concise name for the feature or functionality being developed. Next, user story. So here, you can describe the user's need or goal, explaining what they want and why from their perspective and any benefit of implementing it. Then we need somewhere to document the acceptance criteria, or in other words, the specific conditions or requirements that must be met for the user story to be considered complete. Then we're going to have a content area for priority, so we can indicate the importance of the feature relative to others, for instance, low, medium or high, and that will help us guide development focus. Next, estimation. So here we can provide an effort estimate in story points or even hours to help with sprint planning and workload management. And then lastly, description, where we can provide further information of the feature yeah, in more detail, including context, purpose, and any relevant dependencies or constraints for implementation. So we've got all of our column headers now. So what I'm going to select, suggest that you do is select B6 through to G6. We're going to bold these. Also put this light gray fill color on. I'm also going to make them slightly larger. So all of these headers slightly larger. So again, I'm going to put this up to, we'll put this up to 14. I'm going to left align. So this is all available via the home ribbon. And I'm also going to middle align as well. Next, I'm going to hover over between row six and seven. We see this little icon here. When you see that, left click on your mouse. I'm going to drag the height to around, around 30 or so. I've done a 33 there, but as long as it's you know, considerably larger in height than the others, that's fine. Now I'm just going to put some, I'm going to make these columns a bit wider. So I'm going to make the first column go over here. So now we can see that the user story four has been kind of populated, um, that the full gray filling. I'm also going to increase the font size actually, because I want this to be slightly bigger than what we see underneath. So I'm actually going to make this one more. There we go. There's obviously a bit of a tiered system here. We've got largest, larger, and then a kind of smaller here. I'm going to make the user story a bit wider. I'm going to make this one wider for now, acceptance criteria. Now we can play around with these shortly, but let's just do this for now. So I'm just going through all the column widths and making them larger. Description, we may want it to be a little bit wider than the others. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. Now what I recommend that you do is from B7 through to one, two, three, four, five to 11. So B7 through to 11, select all of those cells and then on the home ribbon, hit merge and center. And then we're also going to hit middle align. Now what this means is when you start typing text, you'll see here, 
it's going to cover all of those rows. And as you can see, it's in, in the center of the cell. So that's where that would go. So I'm going to wipe that out for now. If you select, if you then click in any of those, it's going to select the whole thing essentially. If you then hit Format Painter and then select C7, it will apply the same formatting and style to user story. So you don't have to do it again. So here, this is where you'd be typing something like the user's need or goal is, they want it because, et cetera, et cetera. Now what we're going to do is right click on column D and hit insert. And this is going to create a new column for us. Now what we want to do is select E6, left click and drag over to D6, merge and center. We're then going to align left and we're going to increase the indent. We're going to select column D and we're going to make this column narrower. Now what we want to do here is just type in one, two, three, four, five. So this has given us the ability to enter five different acceptance criteria. You only want three, you only want two. What It doesn't matter. It just gives you the content areas to add them essentially. I'm going to make this slightly larger. Now priority, again, we're going to want the merge center formatting. So again, let's just go to user story. We've already created it and it's already going to have the center and middle line. So we might as well leverage it. So select this format painter, click in G7 and we do the same thing. So format painter again for the description. So H7. So now that's all looking good. If you select B6 all the way through to H11, so all of that, we can then go on the home ribbon, we can put all borders. Now what this does essentially is if we take the grid lines off, so if you click on view at the top and then remove the grid lines, you'll see it just gives it that border effect and it looks great against the white backdrop. So that is really, really useful. Uh, I'm going to put them back on for now, but you get the idea. I'm actually going to make this a bit larger just to make sure that that's covered. And we can make these a bit bigger as well. Just make these content areas bigger. Just gives just gives um, gives the individual who's entering information into this document an idea as to how much information they may want to include. Now, I've also, looks like I forgot one. So I'm going to click on estimation and, or just, we could do this. I could click on title. I could click on user story. I could click on estimation. I'm going to hit format painter. We need this on priority as well. Excellent. Now what we're going to do is select B6 through to H11 and we're going to press control C. We're going to go to B13, control V and B20, control V. So I've copied and pasted essentially the first pre-built uh, template, if you like, mini template. And I've just put that into these are here. So we've got three different areas for different user stories. So they can be on different user stories, essentially. Now I want to set up some conditional formatting. So we're going to want that on priority. So if you select column F and then select on the home ribbon, conditional formatting, then you're going to select, select new rule. The first thing we need to do is select this one. So format only cells that contain. So we're going to have three different priority statuses here. We're going to have low, medium and high. And what we want to do is essentially have, when it's low, maybe a light green, when it's medium, a, a light yellow, and when it's high, maybe a, a, an orange of some kind, just to indicate draw eyes. So if someone was, you know, you populated different user stories in here, your eyes are drawn to those with the highest priority. That's essentially what we're looking for here. And we can quickly work out which user stories we need to work on. So format only cells that contain. And then here we want to change this drop down to specific text containing, you want to type in low there. Here you want to select format. And then on fill, you want to select this light green. So press OK, press OK. And then let's go conditional formatting, manage rules. So you'll see that we have our first rule in place. We want to go new rule, format only cells that contain, format only cells with specific text containing medium, format. This time we're going to go for a light yellow, press OK, press OK. New rule, format only cells that contain, this is the last rule we need to set up, specific text containing high, hit the format button, and we're gonna go for a, this kind of off orange. Press okay, press okay, hit apply, and press okay. So now, let's just say you typed in low, we have that green, medium, and high. So that is your user story template. I hope this video is useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. And with that said, best of luck over to you and I hope you have an excellent day.